Dr. Cornelius, welcome back to the Institute. Um, you have come at a time when we're looking at probably one of the more interesting crises of German-American relations. Both of us walked through the 2003 Iraq War, and now we've got another problem. It probably will pass, but what's different about it this time with this NSA stuff? Well, it's not only interesting, it's really dangerous, since it really, as 2003, involves so many people and stirs up so much emotion and is so close to steering the very core of bad relations, uh, all related to that anti-Americanism we saw in 2003, that I do really think this time is more dangerous, is difficult, is, uh, the, is, is about uh, the core of uh, how we deal with each other. But it's let me ask you this. I mean, you and I both know that if, a, if an event like this comes up, a lot of people in Germany that would be, so, shall we say, predisposed to bang up on the United States would be all of a sudden have another occasion to do that. But isn't that the frustrating thing, that they're predisposed, that they're not, not really questioning it? Uh, and, and then we again see Germany so focusing on itself. This is a, an issue which basically are, has to concern the entire world. And it's not about the NSA, it's about what technology is doing to us right. and who does it to whom. Uh, when nobody's talking that there could be a Russian or a Chinese known who could reveal much bigger issues, I think. Uh, now, on the NSA target list, Germany isn't even amongst the top 10 or top 12. It's sort of somewhere below. Uh, the outrageous thing as well, that the chancellor's on the targeting list, and uh, uh, besides her, probably more than 30 other heads of states or heads of governments. So this is something politically devastating. But uh, apart from that, Germany is no exception to any part of to any country. But, but isn't it true that Germans are extremely apoplectic and extremely angry? And of course, we have people in this country that are angry too. But right. there seems to be this uh, in Germany, among all of the countries there, uh, probably there are the most upset. Well, what we see is one issue playing out, what we always see if, if those uh, things hit Germany. Uh, it's the moral versus realist part. And the moral part uh, tells the Germans this is against our deepest inner belief about the U.S., uh, probably even about Barack Obama, who they used to love and not anymore. Uh, it's not what we uh, want our friends to do with us. But uh, the, the realist try in Germany, basically, well, people who handle these issues, they do know, well, that's what spies do, that's what the BND is doing them, uh, itself too, probably much better watched by parliament or by German legal system. But this is what spies do. And what we better uh, start to think about is what this new technology, what this kind of cheap mechanisms to survey basically the globe uh, will do to the way we live with each other. And uh, if we get past the immediate NSA crisis, I think this is what we should talk about transatlantically. All right, let's come back to that in a minute. But I want to make one more attempt at analyzing this. Is it the case, and you know in the United States very well, that when you come over here that you run into people like me or others and, and we're less upset about being surveilled than a, a normal German would? And that in Germany there is perhaps more of an inclination on the part of your, norm, you know, your Normalstabliche to want to really control the stuff around him, which is almost impossible. You can't do that. But isn't, isn't there a cultural difference here of significance? Well, there, there is a significant difference, but I also see a lot of hypocrisy. You know, people don't have an issue with if Google is collecting their clicking data and what they're looking for and, and tailor uh, advertising the next second towards exactly those people who want uh, all kinds of personal freedoms. Uh, uh, these are the same people who post all their personal details on Facebook right. and complain afterwards if this is being public. Right. Right. Now, um, I think it's a difference now whether this is done by private industry or whether it's done by the government. And there again, some other German strike came in. This deep suspicion about the uh, Überstaat, the Staat who's there, the government who's there intruding into your life and running right, it. Right. And this has, has, has historical reasons. It has, um, uh, well, also, there's also a desire to distrust the state and to legalize things. And this is so counter to the American culture of uh, trusting the government to provide you security. And in Germany, it's not about security. It's about uh, spying. It's about 
they're watching. So, okay, interesting point. I mean, what I could I could perhaps come back and say, well, there is a tendency now in the United States also to mistrust government. There's a you know the, right. tea, the Tea Party movement and the pushback, and even within the Congress, you see now people attempting to say maybe we just went a little too far after 9/11. There is a little bit of pushback oh, yes. now. But let me get back to the point you made earlier because I think that's the more important question. You've got to open up the lens of this camera a bit and say this is not just about you Germans. It's not just about us. It's about a larger beast that we have to all kind of figure out how to contain, right? How do we do that? Well, probably if we tear it into the open. One of the key issues would be transparency. Get these things more open. I uh, am really suspicious whether uh, the intelligence community can maintain or the over credo that what they do is so top secret. I mean, we do see it just needs a Snowden to reveal so much, and there were, was Manning before and others. So I, I uh, think we are moving into an age where this uh, hyper secrecy uh, attitude is not working any longer. And if it's being torn out in the open, it, it immediately clashes with the expectations or with what the general public really thinks happens. And this is a mismatch. People don't expect their government to be so intrusive. Now, I uh, agree, uh, the, uh, the NSA, the U.S. government, totally overdid it. And I doubt, actually, whether they can handle that kind of data. Um, but on the other side, we do have accept, to accept, uh, I come back to my earlier point, we live in the digital ages, and we haven't reacted to that either in our security uh, uh, approach, nor in our laws, nor in the way we uh, safeguard, safeguard privacies. So this is a huge field of ungoverned territory, which I think is just being mapped now. Okay, and we also have, if, correct me if you think I'm wrong here, an enormous an asymmetry, again, across the Atlantic. The U.S. has all of the Googles, the Facebooks, the Apples, and everything. It's all here. And so an effort, as I've heard, even I think from your interior minister, saying that we should have everything routed through German stuff or Deutsche Telekom. I mean, that's kind of ring fencing in a way that's impossible. It will be impossible. I, I, I think there, if, if the German interior minister wants to get in a race with the industry, he definitely <laughs> will lose. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, he's simply playing to the audience now and, and assuring them it is under control and will we'll regain sovereignty over this. Uh, but uh, the, the, the digital age or the, the net doesn't know the, the, the notion of sovereignty. Right. It's all over the world. Right. And uh, so we do tackle uh, a global phenomenon with our little national uh, ideas and concepts. And I think this will not work. Now, if Europe and the U.S. will find at least a common ground on what they think should privacy should be and how the government should handle data and how even private, uh, uh, the, the private industry should handle data, that would be an asset to the world. We can never change China, we can never change Russia, but we can at least set up some standards for ourselves uh, which are in line with our Western values. Now you sound like uh, somebody who might then argue, let's pour this cup of NSA stuff into the TTIP negotiations. No, I don't. This don't. is, I think, dangerous because, uh, well, uh, it is overlapping, yes, in some respect. Data uh, or security is an issue which has to talk about transatlantically. But trade issues are about the classic businesses. And I think this entire data issue is basically something like a second track. Mm. And it is so vast and so important and so basic that it should be taken uh, uh, as, as sort of being a bargaining chip for trade issues. So let's keep them separated. Uh, I also think uh, the data issue requires much more speed and urgency than the trade issue, and TTIP will take years. A long time. Okay, let, let me, I'm not going to roll the clock back and say what could the United States have done well back into June or maybe even before that to have avoided this enormous problem, but we can't, we can't roll that back. What can it do now? What can the new, what could the Obama administration do now, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Berlin? You, I think you know that there's supposed to be a delegation going over, yeah. and uh, what would you suggest they do? Um, well, I think uh, let's start from what they shouldn't do. All these uh, notions that it will be done with an apology. I don't subscribe to that. Um, well, if Obama at one point talks publicly, if he gets his reports, that would be well appreciated. 
but uh, definitely what what is what that could probably be is a new trigger moment for a renewed kind of transatlantic dialogue uh, on the modern issues we have on the on the 21st century so this is data and this is privacy and this is our the way we live in this uh, in this uh, googled world um, we we all are pushed together by technology but we grow apart by our well, the way we are branded uh, personally as, 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 as the way as Germans we are as Americans. So uh, there needs to be much more explaining and understanding on how we tick. And this can only be done if there's a much broader group of people uh, returning to that, what we used to call the transatlantic dialogue or community. This community has basically fallen apart, quite honestly. After 89, it's just a couple of people like you and me who, who, who take some value in it. And if I walk through, let's say, the Washington think tanks and uh, look around how many European experts there still are, uh, I'm flabbergasted. It's, it's, it's nothing. I mean, it's Okay, I, I, I'm obviously going to agree with you on, uh, in some of that, but I mean, I, I want to get back to the issue of whether or not it's going to take the President of the United States to say to, for example, in this case Germany, but not just, look, we've got a bigger problem than you and, and us. We've got a bigger problem that's a mega problem with mega data, big data, big problems. I think that if, if, if you say that there shouldn't be an apology uh, made, but that we need to say, let's expand the lens, let's look at this issue, because we've all got to grapple with it. I've just asked you what, you what I thought the president should do. What should the Germans do? Well, the Germans should wake up and get a little bit more realistic on how the world ticks. And the world doesn't uh, tick in a way uh, Germany likes it to tick. This <laughs> kind of moral, moralistic appeal is that we should abstain from this big data thing and we should uh, uh, respect privacy. This is, this is a thing of the past. Uh, I think uh, Germany was outrun by technology and by how things proceeded. I'm not defending what the NSA did. I think it's overdone. I think they can't use the materials too much of it, and the personal spying on the heads of states is a real no-go. But um, uh, the, the Germans tend to uh, wave their moralistic finger towards the world and let them know you have to take as we do. And this is something which will not work. It just now works in Europe with the Euro crisis on right. an economic field, but uh, there's a very high danger of that kind of attitude backlashing at one point. Because right now Germany is in a position where it can afford to be so uh, uh, sort of telling. Uh, there might come a time, and there will come a time, where the, where the weights are reversed. So a little bit more of openness and understanding of how the world really thinks about these issues. Why are the French not upset? Why the British are not upset? I was at The Guardian the other day, and they uh, asked them, is anybody writing an op-ed piece, or your paper, uh, demanding for Edward Snowden's uh, asylum in Britain? Were just looking at me open-eyed, and well, how could you even think of something like this? Well, this is the difference. Okay, and then so we're talking about a 20, 21st century problem with 20th century tools that we don't really have in sync, right? No, we're not in sync technolo technolo technologically, and we're not in sync politically or even mentally. Okay. This is the problem. All right, so we've got to figure that out. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs>